yo, hey yo, it's Chris on the track. And like I said before, homie, yo, I never spit whack, but I always spit fat like wide and thin. Motherfucker, when I'm up, hey guys, in this game, Dylan Nelson here. Win, never uh, lose. This video is just gonna be a basic beat making tutorial in Ableton Live 8. Live is a very intricate program, there's many ways you can use it to make beats and do a lot of other things as well. But I'm gonna show you the way that works for me. Um, Really, there's a million ways you can do things, and everybody has a different way, but I'm going to show you how I do it. It works for me. Um, first, we're going to open live, but it's really important when you're working with live to know your session view, which is this one right here, and then by clicking up here, you're in the arrangement view, which is more like a traditional uh, digital audio workstation, and both are very, very essential to using live. Um, the tab key on your keyboard will switch quickly between these two and it saves a lot of time. Um, I really recommend learning all of the sh keyboard shortcuts, especially if you're on a Macintosh. Um, it just makes everything a lot quicker and a lot faster. Um, but in making a beat, it, it's pretty good to have a general idea of what you want your beat to sound like, either you know working something out on the piano first or whatever instrument or having an idea in your head. I mean, it's fun to experiment with stuff, and I've come up with many beats just experimenting. Um, but it's it's also really good to have, you know, an idea of what, what you want it to sound like. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up live devices by clicking right here. I'm going to go to Instrument Rack. Um, I'm kind of feeling like a electric Rhodes type piano, so I'm going to go to Piano and Keys right here. Classic electric piano and oops, Aspirations. I'm going to double click that and that's going to open, actually, undo. Um, Command Z on a Macintosh is undo. Um, you'll definitely use that a lot. But I'm going to drag this into session view right here to make a new track. And it should put this little red arm button right here, but it's important to press this if you want to play the track through your MIDI controller. And uh, I'm going to put some reverb on that as well. Normally I wouldn't mess with that until after I'm done tracking and done making my beat, but I think it will definitely make it sound a lot better, especially for this beat. So I'm going to go to audio effects, reverb, hall, large hall. I like large hall a lot. Um, it works for what I want to do. And then turn the dry wet down because otherwise it sounds it's just all reverb and so you want to bring it down to about 15 percent lower is pretty much always better maybe 20 25 so the idea that i had in my head for this one was something like this just kind of a basic chord progression that descends So after you have the idea that you want and you're ready to record it, there's two ways you can do it. You can either double click on one of these tracks right here, these spaces, and you can um, manually write it in by clicking and you know extending and moving up and down with the keyboard. But that takes a lot of time. Um, I mean, I do it a lot for certain things when I know exactly what I want to do. But for this one, I'm going to make sure the track is armed and you're going to hit this little record button right here and it's going to give you four clicks and then you can record your idea. Actually, I want to delete that and make sure your metronome is on when you're recording MIDI like this. And for the sake of this, let's put on uh, record quantization, which means it's just going to make your, your playing perfect. It's going to drag everything right to the grid of your 16th notes or your 32nd notes or whatever. So, I mean, it's going to sound perfect. Sometimes it can sound a little bit, you know, like a computer and too perfect, but it really just depends on what you're trying to do. So let's try that again. Anyway, so let's, um, and then I'm going to go to length here and make it exactly four bars. This is measures and this is um, 
quarter notes and this will be eighth notes. So I want to just bring down the eighth notes until it's four bars exactly. Or you can adjust it right here too. So let's play it back and see what we got. Alright, so that should be good. So now that I have this done, I'm going to drag this into arrangement view. I just take the clip and I literally just drag it over here, or you can you can press tab and put it there and I'm going to highlight it, do command C and then right arrow key to go to the next slot and just paste it, paste about four times. I mean, obviously I'm going to make it longer, but just for now. So in this view, I'm going to press stop and whenever you want to play something in this view, play exactly what is shown here in arrangement view you want to take this button off which is the back to arrangement button and so basically it will bypass anything that's supposed to play here in session view so back to arrangement press the back to arrangement button and then spacebar to play so right now it's you can see the bar right here it's just playing what's here in arrangement view So now let's talk about um, drums. I'm going to put in a drum kit. This one I use a lot. This one I actually made with Impulse. It's called, uh, it's just a Jay-Z um, producer kit basically. And you can see it's not much. It's my kick drums, two snares, hi-hats, and a cymbal. Um, you can really use any kit which is in the instrument section of live devices under drum rack. I mean, there's a lot of 808, 909s, um, a lot of different stuff. Um, and what's good is you can take these waves and kind of construct your own by just dragging the default drum rack into a new track. I'll show you how to do that um, right here. So there's nothing there. So you can actually even go into Finder and if you download you know, a pack of drum sounds, you can just really just drag them into whatever key you want on the keyboard and make your own drum set in you know Frankenstein things and that's what I basically did with the one that I use I just named it DNL kit one so I'm gonna drag it into uh, create a new track in session view and I'll show you what it sounds like and so I mean just messing around with it you know So I want to record hi-hats first, um, just a basic straight eighth pattern. So we're going to make sure I'm on the track and it's armed and I'm going to hit the record button. So let's play that back. And that's it. So make sure that my measure is only two bars long. I can either, like I said, drag it or you can go to length right here. And I wanna, I'm done with that. So let's make a, uh, make a kick drum track too. Done with that. Well, let's add some snare drum. So record. So that's really all we're going to do for this one. Um, What's really good, if you want to make three separate tracks for your kick, your snare, and your hi-hat, it makes mixing it a lot easier, you know, especially if you want to add reverb to the snare drum 
and not the bass drum and etc. So we're going to right click this and duplicate or you can do command D. So I'm going to have three drum tracks and each of them have the stuff that we recorded in each one. So let's make the first one kick drum. It's good to name everything because when you have a lot of tracks it really gets confusing and cluttered up. Snare and then hats. Okay. So I'm going to take the kick drum track that we recorded, bring it over to arrangement view, and drag it in the kick slot right here. Same thing with the snare. Put it in arrangement view. And then the i hats. Or just press tab. And obviously, this is only four bars, so we can either click right here and drag it, or we can copy it and paste it. So, starting from right here, I'll play what we have in arrangement view. Remember to click the back to arrangement button. So now, I'm going to take this, highlight all of it, and copy it three times. Let me do it one more time, too. Now we're going to do a bass track. Um, for the sake of time, I already had a bass track that I wrote for this piece. Um, so I've got the mini clip right here. But first, got to make a literal bass track. So we have a patch so we can have sound. We're going to go to instruments, instrument rack, synth bass, and then hip hop sub. There's a couple different ones I like to use and a couple ones that I've made, but hip hop sub is a pretty good one for intricate bass lines. So here's the one that I already made. I'm going to drag it into here so you can hear it. Okay. So I'm going to take this and drag it into arrangement view. Copy and paste. So starting from the beginning. So, I mean, that's that's the basic beat. Um, what I would do here is I would put in a little intro, like, into the drums kick in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this space right here, do Command-Shift-M, which is Create MIDI Clip. So I'm going to go to my kick. Yeah, so I mean, now you just have a nice little intro until the drums kick in. And so there's a basic beat. Um, in my next video, we'll do a little bit more about tracking and sampling and pulling beats from samples, but for now, um, I mean, that's a basic little beat that you can make in Ableton Live 